here we've got the pump 2010 Ford F-150. Uh, it's been tested off of gasoline, methanol, and ethanol. Yet, the odd part is it doesn't even have a yellow gas cap. Yet, it is a flexible fuel vehicle. Now, Wally, what type of testing have you done with this? You know, when we bought this truck, we bought this as a test mule vehicle so that we could do ethanol, methanol, and gasoline testing on a regular production vehicle. We chose the F-150 simply because it's the most popular vehicle on the planet. We thought we could learn quite a lot by getting this vehicle and seeing what it took to make this run on gasoline, ethanol, and methanol and see how it would pre perform. And we wanted to see what it would take to get it to run all these different flexible fuel type fuels. So we got this truck and then I quickly discovered that all Ford vehicle, all Ford pickups that is, that have a V8 in them from 2006 on really are flex fuel. And I, in further research, I found that if you look at the VIN, I don't know if you can zoom in on this, but if you look at the VIN on a Ford pickup, if the eighth character is a V right here, that denotes that it is flex fuel capable. And so sure enough, this truck is from the factory, a flexible fuel vehicle. So we went about testing this and running it on gasoline and doing some baseline testing on gasoline. But then I switched to E85. Around here in Utah, our E85 really is E70. And when I investigated that, why the distributors of the ethanol told me that they, it's always E70 here in Utah, which is typically a winter blend of ethanol, but that's what we get here in Utah is E70. So I had no problems at all running this truck on either gasoline or E85. So after we ran this truck on E85 and did a lot of uh, testing on E85, comparing it to performance, mileage, drivability, etc., I found zero issues running between gasoline and E85. You haven't had to replace any parts whatsoever? None. No parts whatsoever. So I was really interested in running this on methanol because I'd heard all kinds of horror stories about methanol and what it could do to different materials and I was worried about materials compatibility in this vehicle. So what I did is I went and got a fuel pump from a junkyard out of another 2010 Ford F-150 and I soaked it in 100% methanol. And I kept it there for months. In fact, it's still in a bucket of methanol after a year. And I wanted to see what the methanol would do as far as compatibility issues with the fuel pump. So far, there's been no issues at all with any compatibilities issues as far as the fuel pump or any other part of this system. In fact, I went to the Ford dealer and we went through each part part by part, from the fuel tank, through the fuel pump, through the fuel lines, through the filters, through the injector rails, injectors. There is absolutely zero difference between any of these parts on a flexible fuel vehicle such as this or a non-flexible fuel vehicle. It was amazing. And so we talked a lot about methanol in particular and what it would do to any of these components. And my findings have been that in this particular vehicle, there is absolutely nothing that would preclude us from running on methanol. I even, with that fuel pump, on bench testing it, I've run the fuel pump in a continuous loop for weeks at a time with zero issues on methanol. So, that being said, let's talk about methanol for a little bit. After running this on gasoline and E85, why I started my methanol testing and I've run this truck on various blends of methanol. I've run this on 100% methanol. I've run that on freeway, city driving, and mixed driving on 100% methanol, and I've tested it for compatibility, for drivability, for performance. A little side note is, using an accelerometer, I got my best performance running methanol on this truck. But I had zero issues running methanol. 
I've I then tested it with blend splash blended running 85% methanol with a 15% addition of regular gasoline now that's gasoline with 10% ethanol again no issues whatsoever the truck adapted well to these different blends I then ran it on other mixtures of methanol including 60% methanol which we call M60 56% methanol we call that M56 and it's interesting to talk about M56 because M56 is kind of a magic number for methanol what that magic number is is that the energy content of M56 that is 56% methanol is the same or equivalent energy content as you would find in E85 and so I compared my mileage, my performance, my drivability running M56 to what I did on E85. Again, zero differences. In fact, I got the same exact mileage that I would running on E85. I've even run this down at, at other mixtures of methanol, including uh, M50, 50% methanol, 50% regular gasoline. And then besides that, I've drained the vehicle and I ran this on mixtures of methanol with gasoline that has no ethanol in it. That is non-alcohol gasoline. Again, the truck learned the fuels well, ran well, no drivability issues. I, I had one time when it was cold and I was running M85, that is 85% methanol and that morning it was 25 degrees. I went out, cranked the truck, and it actually cranked over two or three times before it caught, but started well, and then after that, once the engine was warmed up, I had zero issues. But other than that, there have been absolutely no drivability issues whatsoever. There's a half million of these sold every yeah. single year. I mean. It is amazing. You know, since every single truck that Ford has made since 2006 that has a V8, is flexible flexible fuel capable and Ford tells us that they sell one of these every 42 seconds that's a lot of trucks you know in 2010 I think they sold some 800,000 of these and so you talk you look at the whole population of Ford F-150s on the planet and it just represents a huge number just think about the difference that we could make if we're running alcohol-based fuels that are far less polluting and far better for the environment in a truck like this that everybody uses throughout the world. Now that would actually make a difference. So after doing these tests I was really interested in what I could do to get even better mileage and better performance running alcohol fuels that is ethanol and methanol and so I found that if we could tune the ECU in this vehicle, Ford calls it a PCM, right? But I'm gonna say ECU just because I like that better. But if I could tune the ECU to get better performance and better mileage on alcohol, I'd really like to see what I could do. So I contacted several manufacturers. What I did is I, I found that this particular unit, this is this is made by Diablo Sport. This is just a this is their latest model. The Diablo Sport Intune, I believe. Yes, this is an Intune by Diablo Sport. This is just a very really neat handheld device, and you can see that it looks a lot like a cell phone. It's a it's it's the same size same size shape form factor as a cell phone. It's actually a computer, and what this allows me to do is plug it in to the OBD2 port of this truck. So let's go through kind of what I did to program this truck. We'll go through a programming exercise right now. So this truck, like most other vehicles, you can see down here, John, under the, under the dash, that port right there is the OBD2 port. All I have to do to program this truck is plug in my OBD2 programmer and once I plug that in why it gets power and it powers up the handheld device 
And what it's doing right now is it's actually reading the memory that's contained in the ECU of this truck. And I just follow the instructions. And so it's got, you probably can't see this, but it's got a little graph on the bottom of it and it shows me a bar graph of its progress and it's actually reading the memory contents of the e of the ECU. This is literally as easy as a push of a button? It's actually very easy, yes. It's just the push of a button. So it's still reading the contents of the memory and when it gets to where it when it has finished reading the contents of the ECU it's actually going to alert me. It will talk to me just like a cell phone would and tell me what to do next. So now I've got a little spinning wheel going on and I'm going to tune this vehicle. I just simply push a button. So I'm agreeing to the terms and now I'm going to write a new tune into this vehicle. And all I do is turn the key on if I can find the key. I turn the key on. I've got a spinning wheel. Hi Wally, time for ethanol. And now it's asking me what I want to tune this vehicle to. What are and, some of the options you have? Well, some of the options contained here, John, are this will allow me to put some factory default programs into my ECU. One of those is for an 87 octane tune. One of them is for a 91 octane tune. One of them is for a 93 octane tune. And so when I'm running alcohol, I can actually use the highest octane tune right from Diablo Sport and run that successfully. And that's what I did. This also allows me to put in my own programming. For example, if I want to advance the timing a little bit, if I want to retard the timing, if, if I'm an engineer type and I like to poke and prod a little bit, why I can actually use this to program the vehicle to my own preferences. Now I must say, when we started working with this vehicle, we actually went and got an exemption from the EPA so that we could alter this vehicle and we've done that and that allows me to legally use this and tune this vehicle however I, I want to or need to for our purposes and so what I've done is I'm just gonna pick one of these tunes and I'm going to install that in the truck and that is all there is to it so now it's it's downloading that into the vehicle and I'm finished. So anyone can do this. Anybody can do this. Yes. And it's just a, it, it really is a matter of simply plugging this device into the OBD2 port, OBD2 port and programming it. But these are really handy for these are really handy for tinkerers and people that like to modify or, or play around or tinker with their vehicle. This lets me change, for example, if I want to run different tire sizes on my truck, a lot of people like to put larger tires on their, on their trucks. I can use this device to input the size of my tires so that my speedometer will read correctly. It actually will change all the shift points on the transmission so that I'm not lugging, for example, if I have larger tires. If I change the rear end ratio, for example, if I want to take this vehicle and use it off-road, a lot of people like to use a different set of gears in their differential so that they can climb rocks, for example, and do that better. This tool allows me to do that as well. And I'm, it's not that I'm you know, plugging this particular brand, but I found that the Diablo Sport people are very knowledgeable. They already have a set of factory program tunes and there's a lot of aftermarket support from people that have developed their own tunes and they will allow you to put those tunes into this device and download them into your vehicle. Fantastic. The whole point is hopefully we all get to have fuel choice.